Hey YouTubers, I am your host Tony Merkel and I want to let you know that we are a podcast first which means we upload our shows to YouTube. If you really like the show and you want to hear it on the go whether you're at the gym or in the car driving around go to iTunes and hit subscribe. And if you're not on iTunes, no problem. Go to iHeartRadio, Spotify or your favorite podcast player hit subscribe and you can listen to us that way as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. Let's get to it. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blowed his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling it. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touched air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I am your host, Tony Merkel. Thank you for being here. If you've had an encounter or a story you'd like to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionalspodcast at gmail.com. That's theconfessionalspodcast at gmail.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me. Just get a hold of me. And if you want some extra shows every week, go ahead to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com, and check out the join section. Every Thursday, members get an extra show just for them on the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. And there's also access to forums and great things like that with live shows, live call-in numbers, lots of cool stuff at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Now, this week, we have a great show coming up. We have Jeff coming on, who actually saw a gargoyle-type demonic entity when he was a teenager with his friends in a car. And he talks about this experience of this thing and what they saw and how it spawned a lot of paranormal experiences throughout his life. So he's going to be coming on to share his experiences. And I want to let everybody know that I had a lot of people reaching out to me last week telling me they loved the outro music. And that's actually a change of times because when I first started the show, people hated the music I played on outros. But it seems like people have been getting more and more used to the mixes and the mashups that I've been playing. So what I'm going to do this week, whether you love it or hate it, I'm going to play a mashup that I made myself. And then we're going to go into an entire The Confessionals mix where it's about 25 minutes of pure mashup mix for those who are mashup mix junkies just like me. If you want, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Tony underscore Merkel and The Confessionals Podcast. And you can actually also follow my brother Jack, who is my live show producer at Jack underscore the producer. That's Jack underscore the producer. He's 24 years old and he's oblivious to social media. And I finally got him on Instagram. So definitely go to his Instagram, Jack underscore the producer and give him a follow, show him some love because the kid's actually doing something on social media. So let's listen to the trailer for this coming Thursday's member episode. And then we'll get right into it with Jeff. Let's go. Happy 
this was this was many moons ago. I was driving back from Iowa. Um, I was coming out of Jefferson City, Missouri, heading down to Fort Leonard Wood. And I was on Highway 54, I believe. And as I was coming out of there, on, right in front of me in the highway, obviously up in the sky, was this huge, bright, yellowish, white light. Bright as all could be. And if it wasn't in the middle of the highway, kind of, I would like, that looks like a pop-up flare. Except when a pop-up comes down, it floats and goes side to side. But this thing just was stationary. It's really strange. And as I was driving, it just stayed there. It didn't move. And as I got a little bit further, I watched it probably for 10 minutes. And all of a sudden, it just disappeared. It was gone. Just like that. I was like, what in the hell was that? All right, today we got a great show coming up. We have Jeff coming on. Jeff, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, bud. How are you? I'm doing good, man. So listen, this morning I reread the email you sent me and uh, you were talking with us about, and I'm really excited to hear this story because it has layers. It's intriguing. Uh, it's just it has everything I'm looking for in a, a spooky, scary story. So uh, I don't want to give too much away, but you and your friends were driving down a, an unknown road pretty much. Uh, and you can go into why you guys were out there and what was going on and everything. But uh, you guys came across a creature that is pretty scary. So Jeff, if you would like to just kind of go into what you guys were doing out there, what was going on, and how did you guys come across what you saw? All right. We uh, we uh, lived in a small town. You know, there wasn't a whole lot. So there's not really a whole lot to do for teenagers, you know. And and me and the three other friends of mine had, had piled into one of my buddy's cars. And, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't really into drinking or drugs or anything, but we wanted to, to try and find a party because that's usually where the girls are going to be. So we, uh, we piled into my buddy's car and we were going to go to this place called Jackman Trail. Now that's just what the locals call it. If you look for Jackman Trail on a map, you'll never find it. Uh, it, and what it basically is, is there's a river that goes through the town I grew up in called the Saline River and the interstate passes over it. And there's an overpass. It's about, you know, 80 to 100 feet above the river. So what would happen is, you know, teenagers would go down there and they were pretty obscured and they'd hang out and party and, and whatnot. And to get to it, you had to go through this weird roundabout way. There was only one road in and out. And part of the road led you through this really sketchy looking rundown trailer park. And then it was woods on both sides until you got down through some rough roads down to the river where everybody would be. So we decided to go down there and check out the river and see if we could find anything going on. And we get down there and there's, there's nothing going on. There's nobody there. So we figured we made the drive. We'll hang out for a few minutes and then we'll jump back in the car and head back to town and see what we can find. And on our way out, you know, we were coming up through the, the rough part of the road. We were starting to get to some of the smoother area of the road. It was still a dirt road. And we got to the part, it was a straightaway in between the river and where the, the trailer park started. And it was lined with trees down the left and the right side. But well, we made this turn. And as we made this turn, the lights hit something on the left side of the road. And this was really only a one lane road. It wasn't much bigger than for one, you know, like a pickup or something to drive down. And I, I, me and the driver, I'm sitting in the... Uh, the, I've got my, my buddy's driving. I don't want to use his name. We'll just call him F. My buddy F was driving, and I'm in the front passenger seat, and I have two more friends that are in the back seat. They're just kind of goofing off, you know, messing around, talking about stuff, and, you know, typical teenager crap. And, you know, my buddy F and I are looking at, at this thing, trying to figure out what it is as we're slowly approaching it. And when the lights fully hit it, this it's this monster looking thing. It, it was squatted down and I, I could see its, its legs. It had long skinny legs and it looked like it was crouched down and its arms were also very skinny and very long. It, it, they were so long that his, the backs of his hands and his knuckles were actually sitting on the ground. And it had the, the skin had kind of a, 
uh, a pale greenish tint to it with bumps, weird sized bumps in different places. And I could see the bumps because of the shadows of the light hitting them. I could see the projected shadows where the bumps were. And it had this unnaturally long and slender face. And it turned, slowly looked at the car. And it, its eyes, it had eye shine. It was a yellow eye shine. And when it saw the car, it let out this god awful scream that, I mean, I, I could never reproduce it, but I'll never forget it either. And it, in its mouth were these long, sharp teeth just everywhere. And I don't, uh, they had it old school, they rebooted it lately, but do you remember that show V where you had the aliens that would eat the, the mice and their mouths would open really yeah. big like a snake? its mouth seemed to do that when it opened and screamed at the car. And then it jumped. This thing did not have wings or anything. It jumped from the left side of the road across to the right side, landed in the top of a tree and was gone. And I didn't, the only reason I knew that it had landed in the top of a tree was because I could see that part of the tree move. Cause we had our bright lights on and, I could see the tree moving after that, that thing was gone. So my buddy who was driving, he and I both screamed at the same time and he floored it. We got out of there. We stopped a few miles down the road at a gas station and we got out, we were talking about it. And the two guys in the back seat were asking us, well, what was that, man? What was going on? And we said, we, we think we saw a demon. And they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever. You guys are messing with us. No, no, man. I'm serious. We were dead serious. You know, we, at the time, we thought it was a demon. But, you know, looking back, I don't know what that thing was. Because when, when you see things that you don't understand, you're, you look at it through the filter of your, your beliefs. And at the time, I was really very heavily involved in, in, in church and things like that. And I know that sounds kind of contrary to us looking for girls, but teenagers, right? Um but I was very heavily involved in church, so that's what I thought. I mean, that's it looked like basically it looked like a, a kind of like a gargoyle, a wingless gargoyle, only thinner um, and taller, and it had the, the the yellow the yellow eyes, and it it scared me so bad, Tony, that I would not go down to that area. It, it took twenty years before I went back down there. Um, now it's a, they've cleared out all those trees and they've, they've made it a, a, a stocked lake and a park and everything for, for people to go and fish and, and they got walking trails and everything like that. Uh, it took my wife a good month of convincing to get me to, to go down there with, with her to do the walking trails because I didn't, I wasn't going to do it because of what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine and if you went through something like that as a teenager, you're not going to want to go back down there ever because you know, it's down there. Uh, you know, I said to you before we started going live here at the recording, to me, it sounded like a gargoyle, but you said there was no wings, right? Right. No wings. Okay. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't know much about gargoyles and I don't know if they are required to have r wings to be a gargoyle. Uh, but the only other thing I could think of is, I mean, it didn't look like a canine, right? I mean, I think you would have probably described it like that if it did. No, it, it didn't look like a, a canine. It's face actually where it's, its nose was, its nose would look like if you had shaved a human's nose off and all you had was the, the, the nostrils and the skull that was covered by skin is, is kind of what the nose looked like. It didn't actually have a snout or anything. How thin was it? It was, it was thin. Um, basically, when, when you see images on television uh, for people who are starving and things like that, and you see how thin they are, it was thin like that. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if you came across one of those rakes. Do you know about the rakes? I, I've heard about them, but I don't know a whole lot about them. I mean, I don't know a ton about them and stuff, but uh, what you just described is fitting the imagery that I have in my head of these things called the rakes, where they're like a humanoid looking figure, uh, very lanky and skinny and almost like they're starved. And the face is very, uh, 
very demonic looking. Uh, and w- when you said the shaved nose kind of thing, that's kind of how I picture a rake. And I think if I were to look up some pictures of supposed rakes, they look very similar to that. that that's crazy. I mean, I, I tried, you know, at first, like I said, I thought it was a demon. And then I started thinking, well, maybe it was something else. And I started looking at things like, well, could it have been like a, a Baphomet or something like that? And it didn't really seem to fit that Baphomet description. And through all of my internet searching and everything, I'm just trying to type in this description. I could never find anything that could even remotely uh, compare to, to what this thing was. And it just, it, it was it was one of the scariest things that I've, I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to send you a picture of a rake, and I want you to tell me if this is what you saw or something similar. Okay. Are you able to? I pull can pull it up on my phone. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I just hit send now. Let me know when you see it. Okay. Refreshing my email here. There it is. Uh, chat. That is pretty similar, only the face is not nearly as long and slender as this one's was. Okay. The body, wa- the, the body looks almost dead on, but this, this face looks more rounded like a human's face. This, this thing's face was, um, if, if I had to guess, it was probably only maybe six inches wide and tapered down toward the chin, and it was... It looked like it was every bit of 16 inches from top of the head to chin. Wow. And of course, that's a guess, but I mean, that's just, it, it, it was those kinds of dimensions to where the head was abnormally long and thin, but the body, the body looks very, very similar to this. The shoulders on this, on the rake are, are maybe it's just the way the picture is where you're kind of seeing um, some of the back muscles and the shoulder blades, but it, the the shoulders on this one were thinner as well. But that's the main difference that I see is just the head was completely different. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know much about the rake as to know if, you know, there's only one size fits all with the rake. You know what I mean? I don't know if there's different ways they can look and things like that. But uh, when you were driving the car, when your friend was driving the car, uh, did you say something about the eyes changing color or was that just from the headlights hitting it? That was just from the headlights hitting it. When when it looked at the car, because when we first pulled up on it, it was looking straight ahead of itself across the road because its body was squared and oriented toward the, the opposite side of the road, toward the right side of the road. So whenever we our lights hit it, it slowly turned its head toward us and only its head. It didn't move its body. And that's when it was it was like yellow eye shine. Kind of a it was almost it almost had like some orange properties to it, some orangish yellow eye shine. Well, that's really interesting, man. And so uh, that alone, I mean, first of all, I guess when you said it jumped across the street and into the tree, I mean, you said what? It was about 20 feet up into the tree? 20, 25 feet. Yeah. Okay. And it was just in one leap from the squat position up into the tree. Yeah. I mean, he he didn't, it didn't do anything to prepare for it. It, it was like it, it stood up fast and was just in the other tree. Jeez. And, and I saw it, I saw it go. Yeah. And so, I mean, when you see it, that happen, it just seems very unnatural, supernatural. You're dealing with something that's not uh, a natural creature. At least that's what you would think right away. And I, I would think the same thing. Uh, how tall would you think this would have been when you saw it like stretch out as it jumped? Uh, how tall would you think it would be? Squatted down beside the road. I estimated that it was, while it was squatted, it was probably about maybe three and a half to four feet tall because of, of where, because we got pretty close to it with the car before it jumped. Uh, and then when it jumped and stretched out, it almost looks like the way a frog looks when it jumps and stretches out. So I'd, I'd have to say that that thing's size almost doubled easily when it was completely stretched with its arms outstretched forward in front of it and its legs behind it. Jeez. Yeah, it's gotta be terrifying. And, uh, you know, the friends in the back seat that didn't see it and stuff, I mean, uh, they, clearly couldn't have been as scared as you and your friend that actually saw this thing. I mean, I, it's got to be terrifying. Yeah, because uh, the weird thing about it was, was at first, I know what was going through my mind was that that's a dog, that's, you know, somebody screwing around, you know, because we didn't actually scream and get terrified till the thing jumped. 
because it screamed and then jumped and just, I mean, that's that quickly in a matter of a second, it screamed at the car and then jumped. And that's, that's when the reality of, of what we had just seen had, had, had set in on us. And we knew that we had to get out of there because I, I don't know if this thing is trying to get away from us. I don't know if it's coming back. I'm, I'm sure as hell not getting out of the car to look for it, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely not. So this experience that you had uh, happens, but that's not the end of the story because this is like a marking point in a timeline where you've had really strange things happening around you. And uh, before you get into those parts of the story, do you feel like this experience you went through with your friend uh, is the reason why you had these experiences? I I do. I I really do because... uh, I mean, I'd had some things happen when I was young, uh, but it was just like one little thing that had happened. Um, and I can go into that if you want me to, or I can yeah, go uh, ahead. finish with. Well, when I was a little kid, and I'd probably say maybe four or five years old, uh, I was, it was Christmas Eve, and I was laying in bed with my parents. My dad, I was in between them. My mom was to my right. She had the, the lamp on and she was reading a book and my dad was asleep on the other side of me and I was excited. I couldn't sleep because it was Christmas Eve and I looked up in the doorway and I saw this basically a shadow figure standing there. But instead of it being all black, it was a rust color. And it didn't scare me because being a small child, what I thought, I thought this was Santa Claus coming in to deliver the gifts and everything. And so I better pretend like I was asleep. So I, I kind of closed my eyes for a second and then opened one of my eyes back up and it was still there. And then I saw it move down the hallway and out of, out of the doorway. And that was the very first thing that really ever happened to me that I, I, I could think of as being supernatural. And they didn't, like I said, it didn't scare me because I thought it was Santa Claus. Um, even though it didn't look anything like any representation of Santa Claus, you know, I, uh, that's what I thought. So I just tried to go back to sleep so that I would get, make sure my, my gifts were there on Christmas morning. Yeah, I can, I can understand that. Uh, so you think this is Santa Claus at first, but there was no definition. It was just like an outline figure that was the color of rust. Yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. It kind of looked like, um, I'm not sure how, how familiar you, you would be or, or any of the listeners would be with photo editing, but when you add noise, to a kind of like static on a TV when you add noise to an image it kind of speckles yeah. it was like that but it was an orangish rust color with what looked like it had noise um, all through it I got you yeah it makes sense actually and uh, it, it, that's very interesting so you have that experience and that was before this um, I don't know even know what to call it uh, gargoyle rake demon thing that you guys came across right <laughs> right okay Yep, that happened when I was five. And that was the only thing that happened before this rake gargoyle monster thing, right? That is the only thing remotely supernatural that happened to me before this encounter with this thing. All right. Well, um, so that's the only thing that happened. And do you think, before we move into any other stories, do you think that that small instance of that figure that you saw was some kind of maybe marker on your life? Because I, I do I do ask that question sometimes to people because it seems like sometimes people have an early on paranormal experience and it seems like from that experience, everything else developed. But when I was talking to you earlier, it sounded like more like this experience you had with your friends in the woods with this creature is what really kind of marked your life with these paranormal experiences. Yeah, it, it was because that... That instance with the the kind of rust colored shadow figure that was the only thing that ever happened until uh, I was about you know six fifteen sixteen when when we saw this creature in the woods then after that is when things started happening in my house and and it kind of followed me even even into adulthood well why don't you start going into some of that stuff so you have this experience what were some of the things that you started noticing happening around you uh, after seeing this creature? A lot of things start happening in the house that were kind of like a poltergeist kind of activity. Uh, I would be in my room, and my vent for that uh, my air conditioning vent is on the opposite side of the room from the, the exterior window. And so, whenever the, the AC kicked on, 
it never moved any curtains. It never moved anything like that. Heater, AC, didn't move anything. Uh, and I'd be in my room, and the curtains would just start shaking and vibrating. And at first, it, it would really freak me out, and I'd leave the room. But then I started getting to the point where it happened so often, I would just say, knock it off, and it would stop. Um, I had a little, uh, you know, a little, like an American flag that I had stuck inside of the, the, the little thing that held the curtain back and that would start waving and it it would eventually come out and fall on the floor and i'd you know say knock it off leave me alone um just little things like that things moving uh, things disappearing and me not being able to find them one particularly notable thing that, that really freaked me out was i i used to have this it was a like a squeeze bottle like a sports bottle that, that people uh use these days and it's one that's it's not got the real open top on it. It's got the, the push down and push up top. You have to squeeze it to get anything to come out. I had it sitting beside my bed with water and with water in it. And I was getting ready to go to sleep. And while I was laying there in my bed, I heard a weird kind of like sound, kind of almost like a, like a small whistle. And I look over and the sides of that water bottle are sucking in and there's, a spout of water shooting up out of it about four or five inches. And it does this until the, nearly the entire bottle is empty. And it just got water everywhere. And I'm, I'm sitting here just looking at this thing, just not knowing what to do at all, trying to think, okay, because the first thing I try to do is I, I'm an open-minded skeptic about things. Like I, I hear things and, and I don't immediately jump to it being, supernatural or anything like that i try to rationalize it first i try to find a way of making sure that it's not some natural phenomenon so the first thing i start asking myself is okay is this some something due to some sort of a temper temperature differential in the room is there some sort of pressure differential inside of the bottle that's causing this i could not reproduce that no matter how many times i tried the only way to reproduce it was for me to squeeze the thing as hard as i could on each side not even a little bit, but I had to squeeze it as hard as I could to get it to even get a, a, a plume of water up that far. And that 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 freaked me out. But th- those kinds of things with the things moving, things disappearing, you know, water bottles doing weird things, that all went on the entire time that I lived in, in, my, in my parents' house. This was in my parents' house. Um, and one night, I'd finally, it was happening almost every night, but finally it had been quiet for a little while. So I'm laying in my bed and I would always sleep with my door shut, but with the hall light on outside. And, you know, at the time the the bed I was sleeping in was pretty, pretty high off the ground. And I woke up and I see a person standing over me, looking down at me. And I didn't think anything of it. And then I went back to sleep. And then the next morning when I woke up, I started thinking about what I'd seen. And there was just so many things that stood out that weren't right. Um, first was, usually when you have someone who's backlit by a light, their front is going to be in shadow, but you're at least going to see some bit of what color their clothing is because of the, the light behind is going to kind of wrap around enough to let you see some color of the clothing. It was a uniform black all the way, like a, just a shadow, like a a very solid shadow of like a like a, a bald guy. And then another thing that made it really stand out as being odd was that this thing was standing next to my bed with its back to the bed, arms crossed, looking down at me over its left shoulder. So it wasn't even facing me. And I, I was trying to figure out, you know, why? Because at first I thought it was just my dad checking on me. But then I realized where the backs of this thing's knees were and where the backs of this thing's knees were at, it, they, it was even with my top, the top of my mattress. That would have meant this thing had to have been six, three, six, four. My dad was five, nine. So there was, and then there was no way that could have been my dad. And then I asked him the next day. Why, why are you coming to my room in the middle of the night just staring at me? He said, I didn't do that. And I know it wasn't my mom because my mom was four feet, four feet 11. So, and, and this person, it looked like just like your generic man, you know, no hair, 
um, and just a silhouette. And it was solid black. I, I closed my eyes, tried to go back to sleep, woke up a little while later. I don't know how long later. It was still there. Closed my eyes again, fell back asleep. And when I woke up again, it was gone, but the door was still open. Jeez. So I guess it's one of those situations where you're in the middle of your sleep, so you don't react to things the way you would if you were awake. Because I'm assuming if if you were, you know, awake and you see something like that, you'd have a much different reaction. But, you know, a kid half asleep, uh, it's kind of like when, when you pull a kid out of a car after they're asleep and that you could pretty much do anything and, and they're not going to wake up, you know? Yeah, I mean, because my first assumption was that it was my dad just checking on me for some reason. I, I, right. he, he never did that. He didn't do those kinds of things because I'm, you know, 15, 16 years old. He, he didn't really do that. So I, that's, was my first assumption. So I didn't feel any kind of fear. I didn't start getting freaked out until I realized that wasn't him. He wasn't playing a joke on me. He wasn't messing with me. It couldn't have been my mom because my mom works nights at the time and she was four feet 11. So then I was just left with the, with the thought of what in the world was this thing? So when it was, When it was there, it had its back towards you with its arms crossed, but it was looking at you over its left shoulder, right? Yeah, it was like it it backed itself up against my bed mattresses where the backs of its legs were were touching my mattress. And then it had its arms crossed across its chest and was looking down, kind of bent down a little bit to see me over its left shoulder. Did the any of the body language, I mean, not even body language, but the way it was positioned, like its head looking at you, uh, did it seem unnatural or was it just like somebody who was looking over their shoulder back behind them? Yeah, it looked just like a person who was standing there with their arms crossed looking back over their shoulder. Okay. Yeah. You know, the way you're describing this almost sounds like there was something there that you saw and it was almost like it was facing away from you for a reason. Almost like it was the way, just the body language language of it sounds like it was looking out for you or guarding you or something like that. When you wake up and look behind it, like, Hey, you're awake. Okay. Like it, it's kind of weird like that. Don't you think? Yeah. I never thought of that, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, cause it, it wasn't, I mean, I've heard other people's stories of, of seeing shadow people and a lot of those are pretty menacing where the, the shadow person is like, leering down at them or in some sort of aggressive posture that looks like they're going to try to pounce or something like that. But that wasn't the case for this one at all. Man, I I almost wonder if you saw something that maybe was there for your own benefit. Like, who knows? Maybe this freaking monster you saw was going to track you down. I don't know. Because, I mean, like you said earlier, when you first saw it, it, you thought it was a demon. And so maybe there was some kind of like, demonic spiritual aspect to it that um attach tr- was going to try attaching itself to whoever you know saw it i don't know i don't know how these things work i'm just you know theorizing right yeah so you had these experiences in your home uh growing up after this sighting you had uh but from what i understand like you said earlier you've had other experiences happen into your adulthood right well um before we jump into that, there's one there's one more uh, story I want to tell you that's that's kind of it's it happened while I was still living at home, and it's it's one of the more bizarre stories because I have no clue how to explain this one whatsoever. Um, one night I had gotten up to go get a drink of water in the in the kitchen, and as I'm walking through the dining room from our dining room, you can see straight into our living room. And I look into the living room just because I can see directly in there. That's where I'm facing. And I see three people in the living room. Two people are sitting on the floor. And the third person is kind of behind them talking on the phone. And at first, I think I'm dreaming because my mom's at work. My brother's asleep. My dad's asleep. It's it's just me. So this this can't be real. And then I, I, I realized that the colors of these people are are pale blue and they're semi translucent. So I can I can see the couch and thing behind them. And then I take a, a few steps forward and I'm able to get a clear view and I have th- I have three sisters who live on the West Coast. 
And at this time, I was living in Arkansas, which is half a country away. I realized that these three people I'm seeing in my living room are my three sisters who live 2,000 miles away. Two of my sisters are in the floor playing a board game. And my third sister is behind them, standing up and walking back and forth, talking on the phone. And I'm just thinking to myself, I have got to be dreaming. This cannot be real. I don't know what's going on. So I just stood there staring. And eventually, my sister, who was walking with the phone, turned and she looked like she saw me. And I saw her get a shocked expression on her face. She dropped the phone, and before the phone hit the floor, they were gone. The whole scene was gone. And what was really bizarre about the whole thing was that I, I, I could see them, but I could also see the inanimate objects they were inact, interacting with. I could see the board game. I, I could see the pieces on the board. I could see the, the phone that my, my sister was holding. I could see the cord coming off the phone going back to the wall but I couldn't see the wall or anything. I couldn't see any of their other surroundings, but the, the inanimate objects that they were directly interacting with, I could see. And I just walked back to my, my room stunned and I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night because I didn't know what I'd seen. And then the first thing I thought was, you know, something's happened. My sisters are dead. And that, that turned out not to be the case. They still very much alive. But I, I, it just blew my mind. I have no idea what I saw. What's interesting about this is, so you're seeing your sisters in, in what I think is probably uh, the same timeline, just somehow you were um, seeing them in their location, remote viewing their location. And what's interesting about this is the uh, other part of this story, which is you got a chance to talk to your, or at least one of your sisters about this later on. And what did they tell you? They said that uh, my sister who was on the phone said that she looked up and she saw what looked like a white misty cloud uh, that was would be standing approximately the same distance away from them that I was. And then when she said something to my other sisters and they looked at me and they looked at the cloud, it said the cloud disappeared which was about the same thing that happened to me when my, when my sister looked, looked at me, my, my first sister with the phone looked at me. She, she mouthed something to the others. They looked and then my sister dropped the phone and it was all gone. Right. And so that's kind of like where the story takes a turn because now it's not you just having a vision of something that didn't happen. You were hallucinating, things like that to the fact that you saw your sister's and they reacted to you seeing them in your vision of, let's just call it remote viewing. And then later on, you ask them about it and they say, yes, that did happen to them, that very scene. But what they saw wasn't you, but a white mist. So it takes this idea and this uh, experience you had and moves it from this idea of uh, a hallucination to I was just seeing things. I don't know what that was about to that really happened to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was crazy because when I asked my sister about it, I, I didn't actually ask her if she'd seen anything. I was talking to her and, and I told her about what I'd seen. And that's when she was like, I remember that exact scene and this is what we saw. So it, that was, that was, um, that's one of those experiences that are, are mind blowing that kind of open your, your mind to, you know, all the possibilities out there that we don't know anything about yet. Absolutely. And it seems like, I mean, it, I, I just have so many questions about it you can't answer because how does that even happen? How is that possible? Like, I, I don't know what else to call it, but remote viewing. And if you're remote viewing, you did it by accident. You didn't mean to do it, but somehow it happened, you know? Yeah. And my, one of my sisters, um, the one who happened to be, uh, talking on the phone she's she's had several weird things now I, i'm i've always been kind of on the fence about psychics you know skeptic about them but my, my sister claims that there's she has some things and she said some things that have have really made me question whether or not she could really be legit um like one of the things that she told me 
was that her uh, her husband had asked for projected one night, and I, I thought, you're a lunatic. You're crazy. That's just this new age garbage. And then she told me the story that she was in her room, and she was laying on her bed, and she saw her husband walk in the door. And she wasn't expecting him because he was working uh, somewhere either a few hours away or somewhere out of state. And she wasn't expecting him, so she got up and said, oh, hey, and she went over to go give him a hug, and she walked right through him, and he disappeared. And she immediately got on the phone and called him, and he was still at his work location several hours away. Um, another thing that she's done is when I was uh, – I just turned 16 years old. My my cousin was uh, killed in a car accident, and she was more like a sister. We were raised together. She was killed in a car accident, and this same sister who had never – seen where my cousin lived or anything like that had a dream about her where my cousin said hey everything's okay i'm i'm in a better place you know tell everybody i miss them and i love them and and everything's okay and i'm fine and then my sister was able in excruciating detail to describe the room that this conversation took place in And it took place in my cousin's bedroom exactly as it looked when she passed away, Um, even down to the 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 clear telephone that she had that would light up rainbow colors when it rang. My sister, who'd never seen the room or heard anything about the room, described that she described the posters on the wall. She described the um, the exact bed bed uh, covers and sheets that were on there. Uh, She just described that there was a, a, a basket of, of dirty clothes in the exact place where there was a basket of dirty clothes. And uh, that was, uh, yeah, so that, that, I'm not sure if I initiated that or if that's something that it was possible came from her because she's had more things along those lines happen to her. But, um, but yeah, those are, those are some pretty strange stories she's told me. Yeah, I mean, that kind of throws a curveball to the whole thing now because Maybe it was your sister that was initiating this whole experience that you had. And, you know, maybe it's something that she didn't even mean to, because like the other experiences that you just shared, it sounded like it wasn't she was it wasn't like she was seeking it out. It just happened. And so maybe when she's a kid and the experience you had with her was something that just happened with her. And maybe whatever she's able to do wasn't completely developed so that on her end, she doesn't see you, but she see, they see a white mist. Now, when she had this experience with her husband, did he recall anything, or did he was he just like I don't know what you're talking about? He he said he was sleeping. He didn't have a clue what was going on. Okay, so he was sleeping. Uh, so mm-hmm. there there was a possibility of him astral projecting while he was sleeping, or maybe not even and just not remembering it. Um, what I just find interesting is that your experience. Uh, with them seeing a white mist. Uh, How many times do we hear people say a very similar thing, like a white mist appeared in a room and they don't know where it came from? Makes you wonder what that white mist is now. Yeah, I mean, because people, for the most part, the the go-to for that is that it's a spirit or a ghost or something like that. But, you know, with with what I've experienced, it's it's always made me wonder, you know, is it is it something coming from someone else here on this earth and not someone who's passed away? I mean, it's, it, it, it's just more questions than answers, Tony. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's the way it is all the time, isn't it? I mean, everything we deal with, I, I don't have answers for. We just talk about things and, you know, hear people's experiences and try to draw conclusions when we can. But I mean, in all reality, we have no idea what we're talking about. Like, really, I mean, people's experiences and stuff, I can't identify what they went through and I can't tell them exactly what it is with 100% certainty. Because, I mean, th- this is a crazy world we live in. And when we're talking about the the advancements in science that we have with like quantum physics and stuff, like scientists don't even totally understand how quantum physics work. But what we understand about quantum physics is maybe it would explain some of these paranormal experiences that we're having. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm I, I try to keep up on that stuff. Uh, I don't. I'm not quite smart enough to <laughs> to keep up at that level. No, but, me neither. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, I definitely. I mean, it, it it definitely makes you makes you wonder what 
humanity is is capable of when when we're able to access parts of our mind that that aren't aren't there every day or are blocked off from us yeah I mean, there's just so many different channels you can go into trying to explain these things and try to garner information. It, it's just, I, I don't know. It's mind blowing though, for sure. And your sister, there might be something up with your sister and it had more to do with her than you with that experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. Like, um, you know, she's, I know she's, she's got hundreds and hundreds um, of more, you know, like, you know, and one of them will, will kind of come into play in a, in a story that I've got we'll, that we'll get into it in a little in a little bit. But but yeah, she's um, she she's always had experiences like that and things like talked about you know weird happenings of seeing people and talking to people and seeing places that she's never seen before, but being able to describe them um, down to the smallest detail. So wow. it's 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 weird. Yeah, it can definitely be weird. But uh, so, what are some of these other experiences you are referencing? Well, um, one of them is uh, when I was living in in an apartment. Uh, I'd moved. I'd just gotten. I just got a divorce, and I'd moved out, and I'd gotten an apartment. And while I was laying down, I was you know basically you know I, I was I was down. You know, I was I was really in a bad place and uh was just laying in my bed, you know, trying to just think about how was life gonna get better. Uh and I start drifting off to sleep. And right as I start drifting off to sleep, I start hearing the cabinets in my kitchen, the cabinet doors are opening and shutting. And it, it really freaks me out because the first thing I think is somebody's broken into my apartment. So I I pick up uh, my firearm, I start walking through, and I get into the kitchen, and there's nobody there. All the cabinets are closed, there's nobody there. Uh, I had a cat, so then the first thing I thought, okay, well, it was my cat. Well, my cat was off in the second bedroom on top of her perch, out like a light, completely asleep. So if my cat had run from the kitchen to get to that room and get up on top of that perch. Anybody who's heard a cat run knows you're going to hear a cat run, especially across a uh, tile and especially um, across laminate flooring. I didn't hear any of those things. So I thought, I just, I just chalked it up to being, you know, maybe I was just hearing things. So then I went back and laid back down and basically closed my eyes and just started trying to, I guess I guess you could think of it as a form of meditation, where basically all I was trying to do was just trying to focus on how I was going to get through this divorce. You know, how was I going to work past all the the heartache and the pain, and 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 how I was going to 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 be happy again. And just as I started drifting off to sleep again, I hear someone very loudly in my ear my ear yell, "Hey." And that just shook me awake. And it it really startled me. So that the next day I started talking to my sister, um, who has has all these these weird things happen. And what she said that she believes it was was her son, my nephew David, he had committed suicide several years before. And she said that things like that have happened to her and she feels that that's him trying to protect her or me from getting into a point to where we could be oppressed or I don't know, I don't really, I don't really want to say possession, but kind of invaded or whatever, where something can, can alter our feelings and emotions and things like that. And for the, for the, the worst. And she said that she felt that, that was him coming to me because of the way I was, what I was focusing on was how to get better. And, According to her, the the you know what a, the bad guys you know basically don't want you to be happy. They want you to be miserable. They want you to be in pain. They want you to suffer. And it, they felt that they had a good target in me because of where I was, this place in my life. But I, instead of focusing on the negative, I was trying to focus on the positive, and they were trying to pull me back down. That's her explanation. I don't have a clue, but that's um that's what she um, theorized 
that it was was my nephew David yelling at me to wake me up to keep me from going into this state to where I could be uh, oppressed. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, it's a very interesting theory. And, you know, there is no really true answer as to, you know, what exactly was going on and stuff. But it, what she says makes sense to me. I mean, if there was some kind of uh, guardianship going on there and knowing that the mental frail- frailty of your condition at that point, uh, who knows, you know? Yeah, because, uh, yeah, as, as anyone who's actually been on, been through a divorce knows, it's it's pretty it's a pretty gut wrenching deal, and you go through a lot of stuff, and you go through a lot of doubt, and you you even go so far as as I was engaging in some pretty self destructive behavior. Like um, I'd started, you know, I've always you know drink a beer with dinner or something like that, but I had really started drinking, um, and I at the time I used to to. Uh, on an amateur level, I used to race thousand cc sport bikes, and I had my uh, motorcycle out front, and I would drink and jump on it, and I'd be doing 130, 140 down the interstate, uh, two, three o'clock in the morning. Um, just I was really in a spiral of self destruction, and uh, you know, luckily I had some good friends who helped pull me out of it. But uh, during during that that spiral of self destruction, I noticed that that's when you know almost like poltergeist activity would, would start up again. You know, it, I would start noticing things, even this, even this apartment, I would start noticing things not where I left them, uh, things disappearing only to show up um, days or weeks later in a, a very obvious spot, doors opening and closing, um, weird sounds, some whispers, things that sound like people talking to me. And it seemed like as I started coming out of this self-destructive phase and and focusing more on the positive and just trying to become you know get better is when they started to seem to be to, to taper off because I realized that if I kept going the way I was going I was going to kill myself and I was most likely going to kill someone else and that's really what sobered me up to the to the the idea of like I I I didn't care what happened to me, but I did not want to hurt somebody else. I did not want what was going on with my life to affect someone's someone else's life in a permanent way because of some poor choices that I made. And that's that's what turned me around and made me start really thinking that okay, I need to focus on what it's going to take to make me happy and go forward. But but uh, it seems like. It, for me, the, in, in when, I, when I'm in my darkest times is when weird things start happening. I mean, e- even to this day, I mean, in this, in this house I live in now, I've seen when I'm in a particularly depressed state or something, I, I'll see white mists outside the windows, that, and it's 80, 85 degrees outside. There's no reason for there to be a white mist hovering outside a window. Yeah. Did you ever, in those situations, well, first of all, I'd like to say, I'm glad that you uh, were wise enough to stop, you know, living the life that you were living. Because if nothing else, I mean, especially if you really at that time don't really care much about yourself, the fact that you were able to care for other people in the sense that, you know, I don't want to hurt somebody else just because I'm in a bad men- mental state right now. But um, do you think that in those moments where you are, um, in bad states of minds and these things are happening, do you think that that your mental state of being is almost like an open door for things to come in and and start you know showing themselves to you? I, I do because I think that you know the, I think that there's you know true evil in the world, both humanity and spiritual. and I think that when when you're in that in a place like that mentally that you are opening a door for these things that want nothing more than for you to to suffer it's it's like you know everything i say is is basically going to be speculation because it's it's almost like they enjoy the misery and the suffering of 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 humanity and and, and people and they want to drive you down further and further and sometimes it almost seems like the ultimate goal is to, to cause you to end your own life but yeah, I definitely think that because whenever whenever that starts to happen to me, whenever I start getting really upset, really down, 
And I'm not, I'm not just talking about like, you know, oh, I'm upset because I'm having trouble paying bills this month. I'm talking about when I start really getting down. Um, things, it starts, same things like, seems like things start to come around. Yeah. And, you know, you're not the only person that has those experiences. A lot of people tend to have those kind of experiences where the paranormal type things start happening in their lives when they're in bad states. And it just seems like you're an easy target because uh, you're already in a negative mindset. And so it's easy to kind of come in and harass you. Um, I've seen that a lot in different people's lives and stuff. And uh, it, I, I, like you said, I mean, there's there is no real scientific answer to these things, but uh, it's just, it's like pattern recognition. You know, you start recognizing patterns in certain people's stories and it's like, okay, you know, maybe this is a possible solution or not solution, but a possible answer as to what's going on here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I absolutely believe that. So I used to, um, I, I, like I said earlier, I used to be really involved in church and I had a lot of really bad experiences in churches that kind of drove me away, but it, it didn't really, it didn't really affect, um, my belief in, in God or anything like that. It just affected the way that I think about organized religion and, and churches. But it, it seems, it seems like, you know, when I start falling into areas where I start doubting, uh, I start wondering, oh, is, is, you know, is this even real or anything like that? That also seems like a huge invitation for these things to start coming around and, and screwing with me again. And then it, something happens. And then it's, it's like, there's no question in my mind that all, you know, all this is real, you know, your God is real. Everything is, is, is there. And, um, you know, it's don't, don't question because it's, it is there. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've had quite a few issues with, with trying to make sure that I, I, I keep myself on the positive because that seems to really keep the experiences at bay, which is, it feels kind of weird for me to say that being, <laughs> being the kind of person that I am, that I feel like I'm, uh, you know, a very, uh, very grounded, very logical person, you know, like I said, the open-minded skeptic. Um, but it, it, you know, a spade is a spade. And, and when I'm keeping very positive, these things don't happen. When I fall into the negative, they start to happen. It's, that's just the way it's been. Yeah. And I mean, if that's the proof that you've seen in your own life, then just follow that until the evidence is no longer there for it. You know what I mean? It's, it, you can only go by off of what your experiences are. So if your experiences are when I tend to be more negative and questioning life and things like that, these things happen to me, then being proactive about it and trying to pursue a life of positivity and, um, you know, things that are going to keep these things at bay until it doesn't work, then it works. And it's a good theory to have, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what I try to operate on every day. I mean, every day I try to, I try to find the positive every day, my, my, my main focus now is to be the best human being I can be. And, and that basically means that, you know, if I can do something that's a win-win for me and someone else, then great. So that's, that's as long as I keep my focus as being trying to be the, the best human being I can be, um, then everything seems to, to stay at bay. And, and it, it, it makes me feel good. makes me feel better. And, uh, keeps this this negative junk away from me. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, that's a great positive message to kind of uh, put on the rest, the rest of your experiences, you know, like, it's just, you know, you had these experiences, and you know, you learn from them, and you found something that actually keeps them at bay, which is positivity, which I recommend for everybody to do. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Jeff, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your experiences, man. I really did enjoy talking to you. Yeah, hey, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be on there, but you, uh, you got time for me to tell you one last story. Oh, yeah. I didn't stop recording yet, so go right ahead. All right. Well, I want to tell you this one, and I uh, hopefully you or, or maybe some of the listeners out there can help me make sense of what this was. And this was the the uh, one of the biggest things that I've experienced to date. And this happened about, I'd say probably about four years ago. I was in the hospital, and they didn't really know what was wrong with me. Um, the, I had a, had a entire team of doctors. I had a, you know, in, infectious disease doctors, uh, just this whole team 
that was checking everything that could possibly be wrong with me. And I was laying in my hospital bed. I had been in the hospital for about four days at this point. And I was laying in my bed, and my current wife was sitting over in the, the chair beside me watching TV, and I was kind of in and out of, of uh, sleeping. And I woke up, and I I see I'm I, my whole body is surrounded by what looks like an, an an oblong like canopy, you know, like a like you've seen like a canopy on like an F sixteen or something. It's kind of got that rounded. It, it looked like my whole body was encased in one of those, but what I was seeing were stars and space, and it was the most beautiful depiction of space and stars I'd ever seen in my life. And the stars, some of them were glittering. Some of them were bigger than the others. There were, I mean, you could see like all kinds of colors of, of yellows and blues and reds and purples. And I knew that I was awake because I could look over and see my wife and see her watching TV. And I could see the, the, the program that was going on TV. So I was looking at everything, and I thought, this is amazing. What is this? And so then I reached my hand up to touch one of the stars, and I touched one of the stars. And as soon as I did, the whole thing disappeared, and I was just right back where I was again. Um, my sister, who I, who's, when I, whenever weird things happen, she's the one I go to because I don't have a clue. She said that she thinks that there was a possibility that I was on the verge of death and that maybe when I reached up to touch the star, it was kind of God's or the universe's way of saying, we're not ready for you yet and sent me back. But I, I don't, I don't have a clue. I never had any feeling like I was leaving my body or anything like that at all. I just saw this amazingly beautiful shell of, or star field that went from above my head, behind my head, all the way down over my feet and uh, and completely engulfed me on my left and right sides. And it was just the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I mean, it's uh, the way you described it, it definitely sounds beautiful. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, is he having a vision or, but what you described almost sounds like a near death experience. And, uh, you know, people, when they have a car accident and they die in the car accident and they come back to life, a lot of times they they describe, you know, not knowing what happened at first, where they, like, maybe they knew they were in a car accident, but not realizing that they're dead until they're like a hundred feet away from their body, kind of almost like being sucked out of this realm and they see their dead body. And they, then, you know, that they, they'll talk about going almost like through space and seeing the stars and the planets around them. And then, you know, maybe something happens and they get sucked back into their body. Well, I mean, it's not identical to what you experienced, but to the point where it was like, you you were aware of the reality that's here, but you were operating in a different reality. And, and the whole seeing the universe thing is something that's very commonly expressed when people experience and describe their near-death experiences. That's, that's crazy. Cause I mean, I didn't even realize that I was, I was that sick. You know, we thought it may have been kidney stones or something, but, uh, apparently I was, I was, I was pretty sick. So, uh, it's, it was, it was beautiful. It wasn't scary at all. Um, I didn't, I didn't have that overwhelming feeling of peace that a lot of people talk about. I just felt normal. And I, I didn't have this feeling of being outside myself or anything like that. I just saw this beautiful star field. And I, I, I had this thought in my head as I reached up to touch the star that I could touch whatever star and I can go there. And then that's where I, I, can, I can go to that star. I can, I can visit it. I can see it. So when I reached up to touch one, it just, everything just kind of, was instantly gone. Wow. Fascinating stuff, man. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, some of the things that you've seen in your life, I don't know if I'd want to go through some of the experiences, but to be able to, if I could, if I could have uh, uh, almost like a, a, a time travel experience where I'm able to kind of out of body experience what you have seen, some of the things I, I would love to. I mean, just 
what you described here with the stars and and then all the way back to the beginning of this this monster you saw in the woods when you were a teenager i i just wish i could see what you saw sometimes man this is some fascinating stuff yeah it, it's it's uh, it, it's really cool to 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 see and talk about you know after the fact and it's especially really cool to be able to tell somebody about it that doesn't think i'm a lunatic or that i was hallucinating or or, or seeing things you know, it's it that's that's a great vindication because I stopped telling people about what I'd seen because I I got I got tired of being being made fun of. I mean, I I I don't care what people think to a certain degree, but when people are are actively harassing you about it, you get sick of it. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's 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 good to be able to 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 kind of get these these experiences out there and and get them in front of some people who may have an idea of, of what I experienced, what's going on. Because for me, I have, I don't know. I don't know what that thing was. I don't know what those stars were. I, I don't know why I saw, you know, almost apparition, like, uh, you know, images of my sisters. I don't understand or any of these things, but, um, it, it's good to be able to get this, get the experiences out there and, and not be thought of as crazy. Well, I certainly don't think you're crazy, my friend. Uh, I think that your experience is, are ones that people would wish they could experience, some of them at least, or at least see what you saw. Because uh, anything from your sisters to the monster to the universe around you, uh, it, it, very fascinating stuff, man. I do appreciate you coming on and sharing it. Yeah, I appreciate you letting me be on, brother. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, go ahead and share the show with your friends, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I don't care how you share the show, just share the show. And now, without any further delay, let's get to this week's extended outro, starting with my own personal mashup that I created called Swifted. And then we're going to transition into the TC Mix, about 25 minutes of mashup mixes just for you. If you enjoy this extended outro, Post a video on Instagram of you listening to the outro while you're working out, dancing, jogging. I don't care what you're doing, but if you're enjoying it, post a video and tag the confessional so we can share it with everybody else. All right, guys. And until next week, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Bye.